What's up everybody, this is Danny, and this is the LG Watch Sport, a new Android Wear 2.0 smartwatch that LG and Google collaborated on that would showcase their brand new software. But if Android Wear 2.0 is coming to older smartwatches like the Moto 360 version 2 and the Huawei watch, then why would you buy this one? That was the question that I was asking myself the entire time I was using this. I've been using this for about 48 hours and there's some things that I really love about it and then there's some things about it that really just have me shaking my head. Number one, this is a watch, so it needs to be comfortable. It's one of the first things that I look for when I first put on a smartwatch and I hate to say it, but I think this is lacking in that department. It is super thick at over 14 millimeters, and if you've ever seen the LG Watch Urbane 2nd Edition with LTE, you can see exactly where the sports blueprint came from. I actually like larger smartwatches for I think the Samsung Gear S3 Frontier looks and feels amazing on the wrist, but the sport is pretty heavy on the wrist, and I definitely notice it there, unlike other watches I own like the Apple Watch or the Huawei Watch, and form factor makes a huge difference in my opinion. Who knows, maybe you'll feel different when you put it on your wrist. Another thing is that you can't remove or change the bands as far as I know. Some say that there are antennas integrated into the bands and that's why you can't remove them. But I really hate how I can't change the look of this watch or supplement it like I do with other watches that I own. The good news is that the band itself is decent feeling, but I wouldn't call it comfortable. The build quality is very solid though, nice metal body. There are three large buttons on the right side with a functional crown for navigation, and I didn't find this to be a problem at all while bending my wrist with everyday use, but the crown does stick out pretty far, so if you're working out, doing push-ups, things like that, you may trigger the assistant. This is a big watch for a reason because it is packed full of sensors such as GPS, Bluetooth 4.2, barometer, gyroscope, accelerometer, a heart rate sensor. I mean, it's crazy. It's also IP68 waterproof, so you don't have to worry about sweat or if you get rained on, you're good. This is something unique that I haven't seen before on a smartwatch. The back plate can be removed with this little tool that comes included, and you can add a nano SIM card after purchase if you like. The display is nice and large, 1.38 inch P OLED. It's nice, it's bright, it's really colorful and crisp. And there's no flat tire. You get the ambient light sensor built into the display, which is cool and it works really well. Android Wear 2.0 is much cleaner than the previous software. It's nice and responsive too, most of the time with fluid animations. I just feel like everything's a little snappier on this watch. The notifications are handled better, the subtle animations, it all feels a little bit faster and just more cohesive. It is nice having more control directly from the smartwatch, like having the Play Store so you can install directly on the watch itself. And I am thinking about pairing this with the iPhone since that is my daily driver and it's still going to be limited, but I want to see what the experience is like. So let me know if you want to see a video on this. The specs are pretty much what you would expect. Snapdragon Wear 2100 processor, 768 megabytes of RAM, four gigabytes of internal storage, but I'm really enjoying the overall experience. I really like the crown for scrolling, but I don't like how it doesn't work for certain apps like you would expect it to. Something as simple as the contacts, the crown doesn't work. This just blew me away, and I'm sure it'll be fixed in a software update, but little things like this and Spotify not playing back properly on Bluetooth headphones, and if I hit play, it'll just play right back on the phone, and some of that stuff doesn't make sense. I'm sure it'll be fixed later, but I just feel like it's a little bit half-baked. Google Assistant is a nice addition. You just hold the crown and it gets activated. You can send text messages by voice and follow-up questions as well. This is just personal, but I wish Google actually talked back to me on the watch. I know some people wouldn't care for that or be a little distracting, but I think I would love it. There is an option in the Bluetooth settings to play back the phone audio on the watch, but I haven't found that to make much of a difference overall. The button above the crown takes you to your fitness stuff, and then if you hit that button on the bottom, it triggers Android Pay because there's NFC built inside, so you can pay directly from your watch. You can activate LTE on this watch and use it without your phone, but for some reason, there's only AT&T and Verizon support at this time. I don't know why there's no T-Mobile support. Unfortunately, this does cost extra per month, but what's awesome is that it ties it in with your phone. It's called Number Sync, so when you get phone calls, you'll get them directly to the watch, use the same phone number and the same data plan, so that's kind of cool. 
I had a few questions on Twitter about phone calls. If LTE is not activated, yes, you can make phone calls from the watch when it's connected via Bluetooth. You just have to pick it from the menu that pops up, but sometimes it just doesn't work. It's really buggy. I think that's a little weird but you can take phone calls from the watch. If you get a phone call, you can answer it directly from the watch itself. There is a speaker there, but the speaker is not the greatest. It's just like any other smart watch. So if you're in a quiet environment, it can work in a pinch, no problem. But when you're in a louder environment, it's really not gonna work that well. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> oh God. The music playback actually sounds okay. So maybe in a software update, they'll improve this. This is what the speaker sounds like with music. I've been using this watch nonstop over the weekend. It does have a 430 milliamp hour battery, but I'm gonna say you're lucky if you get two days use out of this because after a full day's use, I was hovering right around 30 to 40% left. With LTE use, you're probably gonna have a little bit less but to be safe, you're probably gonna have to charge this every night. Overall, I feel like this is a nice package and at $350, it's pretty competitive. But for me, the bulkiness and the lack of customization is something that has me thinking. The vibration motor is subtle. It has a great display. It's nice and fluid with performance. So if you did buy it, I don't think you'd be disappointed. There are definitely more comfortable and better looking smartwatches out there. And if you already have an Android Wear watch that you're happy with, and it's on a list to get the 2.0 software update, then I don't see much excitement in this watch. If you don't own a smartwatch though, and you want the best of Google on your wrist, and you can deal with the bulky watch in exchange for all of these features, then go for it. My advice, keep the smartwatch that you already have, or you buy an older one at a discount, or you wait for something sleeker like the Huawei Watch 2.